Hello everyone, this is Carly with My Memories. I wanted to try and do a quick video tutorial on our preference options within My Memories. So to get to preferences, if you're in Windows, preferences is under edit. In the Mac, it's under this My Memory Suite menu. If you just go down right here, you'll get to preferences. And I'm just gonna briefly go through these with you really quick. Now, before I get started, I want to make sure that you know that these are just your default preferences. So anything that I'm going over in this screen um, is how it will show up if you are over here. This will be the defaults in this area. You can still make changes just as you would able, be able to normally. However, these will be your default settings. So if we go in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my cursor to kind of show you the areas that I am talking about. So first off, we have the edit text on add. So what that is, is if you placed your text box, you will immediately have a cursor to which you can add your journaling or your text. If you uncheck that, it will just add the text box. So I currently have mine so that I can just go ahead and start typing what I need to type, so I leave that on. <laughs> Now, if we look right here, we will, we will see that we have our text box size. Uh, if you, it's all about your preferences. If you want it bigger, you can make it bigger. If you want it smaller, you can make it smaller. Here we have your font. If you have a go-to font that you like to use, I would suggest changing it right here. If you are someone who likes to do a mixture of different texts, it probably doesn't matter what your default font is because you'll more than likely be changing it anyway. Here we have the size, that's pretty straightforward. Spacing is the space between the lines. So, um, so like the spacing from here to here, it would be that space in between. Tracking over here is the space between each individual letter. So you can make those adjustments there as well. Of course you have your standard alignment a lot of times I like to have mine be centered. So if you want to choose yours to be centered, your text box boxes will always have the text within them centered as your default. Now, once again, you can choose it to be something different, but default, it will be centered. These options are if you have your photo box or your text box, that will be how they show within that text box. So this one, the text would start at the top. This one, it would be centered in the middle and this one, it would be down in the bottom. So you have over here, you've got your bold, your italics, your underline and your bullet. Border is kind of just a, a, a frame around your letter or your text. You can go ahead and you can change that to be either none or you can change the thickness of that border and the color can be changed there. And once again, these are default. You can add these to whatever you want in the software on a page by page basis, but this is your default settings. Padding is the space in between the text and the text box itself. So you can go ahead and you can change that there. You can make it less, you can make it more. You have your standard opacity. You've got your colors and down here it will show you what your sample text will look like. Um, that's it for the font section. Now I chose to go over every one of those features because there's there's quite a lot. Um, some of these have things that I don't think will be applicable to most, so I'm not going to go into them too much. But here we talk about the shadows, so we're in the shadow preferences. And here we've got our opacity, so you can see, tell here that it changes how light or how dark it's appearing. Blur, more blurry, um, pretty fine. It's so practically no blur at all on that one. So you can change those default settings. Then you've got your color that you can change. And then also, for those who might not know, you can change your shadow orientation however you want. This can be happening on your defaults, and this is also an option over here in the different fields where it talks about shadows that it, right here. I have a tendency to like mine to be slightly to the right. Um, and then you can also change where, which area those settings are applied to. Um, 
and which ones you can create the new shadows for. All right, so that's that for that one. Now here we have our windows that right here it talks about display ruler in pixels. So over here you'll see that there are um, measurements and those are in pixels. You can change them to be inches, millimeters, or centimeters. Canvas zoom default is right here, but then down here that's what it's applying to is this zoom 100%. So it can be that can be changed as well. Smooth canvas rendering is an option that we have available for customers who wanted to see their pages or their albums in exact quality like how it how it how the quality actually is. So within the software we kind of cut down a little bit on the quality so that the software doesn't need a super strong computer to operate. Um, however, some customers were not liking it that um, it didn't look as good quality. So this is an option that you can check if you want to see it at maximum quality. However, we recommend at a minimum you have 8 gigabytes of RAM and ideally you would have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So unchecking it, yes, you won't be able to see your, your projects at full quality, but your computer will be a lot happier. So, and if you ever want to check what the quality is, if you're worried about it, if you just come up to, I'll just show you real quick. If you just come up here to preview and you do print quality, that will show you the exact quality of your project in case you needed to know that. Kind of a little bit of a side note, but that's okay. So I'm just going to go back into the preferences. All right. So, and then you've got your trim area, which I currently have showing. If you're wanting to create a photo book and get it printed, I would highly recommend you show the trim area. Um, if you do, so that's, that's what this gray thing is right here. Um, and it becomes more obvious on certain ones. So say for example, if I was going to have this printed in a photo book, this area might get cut off. Um, that's just to kind of cover our basis to let you guys know there's a possibility that this is going to get cut off so you don't put someone's head there or you don't put some important text within that area. So if your goal is to create a photo book, I highly, highly, highly recommend you making sure you have your trim areas on. All right. So then we've got forgot where I was at. Um, the position, show rulers, show page, uh, show page guides, snap to guides. Snap to guides are kind of nice because it kind of can help you align items in a similar distancing. So hopefully that, that makes sense. But um, if you haven't used snap to guides, I, I would recommend you trying it. Um, show relative spacing guides, show toolbar, control panel, thumbnails, gallery. And if you're someone who struggles with um, visual, if you if you have some uh, vision problems, I would highly recommend you doing 2x. Mine is at 2x. So normal is about half that size for your thumbnails and for your previews down here. Um, I would highly recommend it. I think even if you don't have any um, visual impairments, they're still helpful and why strain your eyes unnecessarily. Um, and then your guide color, you can go ahead and change that there. Here it is, the main part I'm gonna focus on right here is you can change your photo box size. Pretty self-explanatory. And this one, with it being checked, that means that once you place a photo, it will give you the option to immediately um, adjust how that photo is within that box. If you uncheck it, the the software kind of automatically puts it a certain way and then you'd have to go and make those changes if you don't like them. I'm not sure why I closed that window. Hang on just a second while it comes back. Okay, so back to where we were. This one is so you can save your projects more quickly um, or not as quickly, it's totally up to you. Uh, enabled auto captions. That is where instead of saying image 1343, then you could have it say, happy birthday, Susan. 
and it would have that be the caption of that photo. So that is what that is about. And then here we have just different defaults, um, you know, your export location, your save location, um, those you can change. You can have it reset to what we normally would have it. I believe mine is already at its default. Um, and then reset warning messages regarding trim area, image size, and etc. Um, so those are just pretty standard. So anyway, that is kind of the the basics of our preferences. Now, once again, all of those were just for the default settings within the software. You can still go over here, and if you don't, you know, if you place a text and you want to change the font. You can go ahead and you can change the font. It is just what it is defaulting to when when you set it. So just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And um, thank you for watching. And we will be doing some more videos for you guys. Take care.